Coming up on this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We've got details on new antibiotic restrictions that could have a major impact on your cattle business. Plus, we'll discuss how good fertility goes hand in hand with good weed control when creating productive pastures for your cattle. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Hi, everybody, and welcome to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Russell Nemitz. While herd health is always a top priority for members of the beef cattle industry, but new restrictions on the purchase and even use of certain antibiotics could have an impact on how you care for your cattle. Joining us now is Dr. Kathy Simmons, Chief Veterinarian at NCBA. And Dr. Simmons, the Food and Drug Administration is announcing that several key medically important antibiotics will go from being available over the counter to requiring a prescription. Why is this change even occurring? Yes, this change is occurring because it's part of FDA's uh, plan for judicious use of antimicrobial drugs. And they're doing this through their guidance uh, process. Uh, back in uh, 2012, they did guidance for industry 209. In 2013, they did guidance for industry 213. And these two guidances stated that the medically important antimicrobial drugs could not be used for growth promotion, but needed to be used for uh, prevention control and treatment of disease. Also, uh, it, they stated that uh, these medically important antimicrobial drugs should be under veterinary oversight or obtained through veterinary consultation. And if you remember back in uh, Guidance for Industry 213, this took the medically important uh, antimicrobial drugs that were in feed and water and made them uh, obtainable through a veterinary feed directive or in the case of water through a prescription. We're talking now about the remaining 4% of these medically important antimicrobial drugs which will be taken from their over-the-counter status and the labels will be changed by the drug companies to say that they do require a veterinary uh, prescription. As I said, this is part of their antimicrobial stewardship program and their strategic plan that they put out in 2018 for antimicrobial stewardship in veterinary settings. How should cattle producers prepare for this shift from over-the-counter to prescription antibiotics? Well, the first step is awareness, you know, and that's why we're here. We're trying to tell people this is going to happen. And so that those 4% of the antimicrobials, things like oxytetracycline injectable, sulfa boluses, some of the intramammary infusions, penicillin uh, injectable, are going to no longer be able to be purchased over the counter or through catalog distributors without a veterinary prescription. So that means that these labels are being changed, and this has hap been happening over a two-year period of time. This first came out in 2021 with implementation by June of 2023. So these products will not just be taken off the shelves at that time, but they will no longer become available. So they will go out just by supply and demand. Dr. Simmons, explain why it's so important for cattle producers to have a good relationship with their veterinarian. I think it's important uh, because, of course, the veterinarian is the person who's going to help you with your herd health program, with a lot of programs that you need, and having a veterinary client-patient relationship will allow you to obtain products if you have an agreed-upon protocol with your veterinarian. Some of these very simple uh, diseases that have been treated by uh, producers using some of these products, uh, you can establish a, a treatment protocol with your veterinarian so he or she is aware of how you're going to be using these products, and I'm sure uh, you can work out a way to obtain them through the veterinarian. And finally, another very important issue for cattle producers is the threat of foreign animal diseases like foot and mouth disease. What is NCBA doing right now to help protect the cattle industry from these type of threats? NCBA works really on two fronts to protect against foot and mouth disease. We work through our policy and advocacy arm in Washington, D.C., and there we become involved with USDA's National Training and Exercise Program for Preparedness Activities, as well as advocate for um, 
the resources that we need in case of an FMD outbreak. And by that, I mean, in the last Farm Bill in 2018, we were able to get animal health provisions, one of which was a National Animal Vaccine and Veterinary Countermeasures Bank, which we call the FMD Bank. And this bank um, is for a national FMD vaccine uh, storage so that in the case of an outbreak, we would have vaccine uh, that was readily available to use. Uh, we hope to uh, renew uh, this funding at a higher level in the upcoming Farm Bill. And the other arm that we have that works is the producer education arm. And that works through the Beef Quality Assurance Program. And we, uh, in the Beef Quality Assurance Program, we support biosecurity measures for your individual farm. We even have a biosecurity template uh, in BQA that you can use or the producer can use uh, with their veterinarian to establish a biosecurity plan uh, to protect against both domestic and foreign animal diseases. Dr. Simmons, thank you so much for your time and all you do for the U.S. beef cattle industry. Thank you. Don't forget, every day NCBA staff in Washington, D.C. and Denver work to protect the interests of cattle producers all across the country. Join in the fight to protect our way of life by becoming a member. And it's easy to do. Just call 1-866-233-3872 or visit the website ncba.org. Still ahead here on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we've got a look at some very exciting technology that can provide pasture weed control and fertilization in one easy step. Matt Makins here. In this week's Weather Watch, where were we in November? How did that forecast pan out? And where are we headed for December? That's all coming up in this Weather Watch. When you spot BRD in your cattle, that's your golden opportunity to target infection and its associated fever with a single dose of ResFlor Gold, the industry standard dual therapy. To learn more, talk to your Merck Animal Health rep or your vet and see label at resflorgold.com. Animals intended for human consumption must not be slaughtered within 38 days of treatment. This product is not approved for use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older, including dry dairy cows. Hi everybody, I'm Tom Elliott with John Deere. producers know the value of grazed forages and improving pasture production means better feed for your cattle and more profit potential for your operation. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Matt Fleck takes us to north central Arkansas for a look at an exciting technology that can put more grass in your fields and more money in your pocket. Growing more grass gives cattle producers their lowest cost opportunity to put more pounds on their cattle. That, however, is often easier said than done. Producers need to pay attention to the weeds in the pastures because they are crowding out, out competing good forages. Every bite of grass that that cow takes or that stalker calf takes, you want it to be something that's going to be nutritious and is going to lead to putting pounds of beef on that animal skeleton. Weed control is a big deal. Uh, you know, when it gets hot and dry in the summertime, if that grass is having to compete with a lot of weeds, uh, you're losing all that. That's our number one, number one fight is, is weeds. For every pound of weeds you have in your pasture, that's going to remove one to one and a half pounds of grass. And many of these weeds are not palatable to cattle and some of them are even robbing your yields because they will cause grazing avoidance. They have stickers and they're a pain for cattle, so cattle will tend to avoid them. If you have weeds, you don't have as much forage for your cattle production. Either you're gonna to have to reduce your carrying capacity, so you'll have to sell off cattle earlier than you wanted to, or you'll have to purchase feed and hay and forage grown in your pastures is often the lowest cost forage you have. So if you have poor forage, 
you have to buy more hay, that's more expensive for your bottom line. Fertilizing pastures is a tool many producers use to boost forage growth, but fertilizer alone does not address the issues of weed control. Most of our producers fertilize their hay fields religiously, and then pastures can, you know, are, are as needed. You know, if they're, if they're stocking more cattle, they'll fertilize their pastures, and that just helps them grow more grass and raise more cattle. Yeah. On pastures, if they put fertilizer on their pastures or hay fields uh, and no weed control, they're, they're growing pounds of weeds also. And so with some weed controls, it makes a big difference on, on their production. Most of the producers in my area that are truly trying to realize a net profit are very interested in all the aspects of pasture management. And they're always looking for new ways to do things. New Ulti Gray's pasture weed and feed from Corteva AgriScience allows farmers and ranchers to address both pasture fertility and weed control at the same time and at the right time. Ulti Gray's is our new service offering whereby certified Ulti Gray's pasture weed and feed retailers uh, can deliver both your fertility needs and your weed control in one pass. Historically, what we've needed to do is to go over your pasture with a fertilizer application and then come back with a second separate application to spray for your weeds. This is a process whereby we can combine the two, saving you the cost of a second application and delivering not only fertility, but weed control at the same time. The advantage of that for our farmers are window of application. Sometimes there's only two hours a week that's fit to go out and spray because the wind's blowing, chance of rain's coming, something like that. The benefit on putting it in the fertilizer is the window of application is a lot broader. And it gives them more chance to get out and, and get the product applied in a timely fashion. You get your fertilizer put on, you get some nutrients added to your soil, and you're getting weed control that they never could get before. And they're getting it early enough to do a good job. They're not waiting till the weeds are mature. And then uh, sometimes we'd have failures with herbicides. And lots of times it was due because they were spraying too late. Now they're getting timely applications of herbicide and getting fertilizer on both at the proper timing. And it's, it's been just a win-win for using both of those technologies. For Brandon Olson and his customers, seeing pasture health is only one benefit of Altigraze. Not only does the one-pass application process save time, but since cattle don't have to be moved off pastures before or after treatment, it also saves in labor. The results we've seen have been very, very good, better than we had assumed, because most of this research has been you know, 85 to 90 percent control compared to spraying. We're seeing 100% control of spraying just because they're getting out there earlier when the weeds are smaller. All our customers have been very happy with the results that they've received. We believe that the impregnating fertilizer has, is, is as accurate as spraying, if not more accurate, be, just because of the evenness you get. And it doesn't matter if the wind's blowing 10, 12 mile an hour, you can get right up next to the fence and, and know that it, that's where it stops. So that's a good benefit. I had 60 acres that I used it on in the spring. I think we got it on at the last of March, maybe 1st of April, uh, which this year I intend on using it, getting out there a little quicker. We was having a bit of a thistle issue. Uh, we was having some ragweed issue. And uh, so we used it. And on that 60 acres this year, uh, I don't think I had three thistles on the whole deal. But there was no ragweed whatsoever. Uh, my grass was, you know, thicker, better, uh, a lot healthier. Once we got the weeds out of the way, the grass kind of come along and blanketed and covered the ground. And, uh, and I feel like, uh, our cat, you know, my cattle done better. They stayed healthier, looked better. It just lets you keep your grass in better shape to withstand a, a, a drought. You know, the adverse effect of the weather might put on it. If you talk about a healthy stand of grass being a very good uh, mechanism to suppress weeds, then you ask, okay, what goes into keeping and maintaining a healthy stand of grass? So obviously it all begins with a soil test to know what the fertility needs are. When we talk about establishing a healthy pasture, its fertility, its weed control, when we talk about maintaining a healthy pasture, that's when we start getting into rotational grazing, not overgrazing, and making sure that that pasture goes into the fall, a healthy, vigorous stand of grass. Alti Graze Pasture Weed and Feed is exciting technology to help pastures thrive. It is available through a network of certified applicators 
in 22 states. As a producer, if you're dealing with a certified Alta Graze uh, weed and feed retailer, what you know is that retailer has gone through extensive education and training so that they know how to do the blending of the herbicide onto the fertilizer. They're using dedicated equipment and they have the highest standards of product stewardship. So you know you're gonna be getting the fertility needs you are desiring and you're gonna be getting the appropriate herbicide for your individual pasture needs. If you happen to have your own application equipment, whether it's a truck or a buggy, and it's dedicated to pasture, then you will be able to go to your UltiGraze retailer, get your blended impregnated fertilizer, and you'll be able to deliver it on and to apply it to your own pastures. We're here to help our producers, make them be more productive. They have a few more cows, that means they have a little bit more money to spend and, and, and uh, more pickups to drive, and it helps the economy all the way around. Reporting from Harrison, Arkansas, I'm Matt Fleck for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Want to learn more about the benefits of using a product in your pastures that combines a herbicide with a fertilizer? Just visit the website altergraze.com slash C2C. Still ahead on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, you'll learn about an innovative technology that can make a real difference in the fight against BRD. That story, when we return. Grass is the center of our universe. We've got to have a grass program that we can count on and plan on. That's what we need to sustain us, to keep us growing, to keep us prospering. Time now for Weather Watch, brought to you by Ag Risk Advisors and WSR Insurance. Matt Makins here, time for another Weather Watch. In this one, I want to break down what happened in November and how it's going to carry over into December. So we'll have your December outlook this week. For November, it may surprise a lot of folks, but uh, we talked about this breakdown in a previous C to C, but it was going to be colder than normal for the Northwest, warmer than average for the East, and that's pretty much how it played out. But the surprising thing was, was just how cold it became, say the second half or so of November, especially around the Great Lakes. We had all that lake effect snow and for the East. But bottom line was the warmth that we had early in the month offset that cooling later in the month. So eastern U.S. was warmer than average in November, and we also had the colder than average conditions across mostly the, the central and northern rocky region there across the west. What about precip? Uh, we did have some valuable water throughout Texas into Florida, although in sections of Florida, obviously with a hurricane situation recently, we could probably taper off on some of that rainfall. We don't need to do any more uh, flooding. Uh, for sections of California, had some wetness, the Great Basin as well, and an area from about uh, the Flint Hills of Kansas on up toward the Great Lakes had some water too. Very hit and miss, kind of sporadic in areas throughout the course of November. Where are we going in December? Well, the pattern overall kind of remains the same where the focal point of the colder air is going to try to stay focused as it was in November, across the Northwest. We are going to spread in some colder temperatures across the Northern tier throughout the month uh, that may linger later in the month and then also down to the south, likely warmer than average. But that does not imply that some of the cold bursts that move through the plains won't also reach you. So yes, I do believe the southern tier will be warmer than average for December, but don't be shocked if a cold front comes through to, to quickly cool you down too. But again, kind of focusing on the northwest there with the coldest of temperatures. Precipitation. December, January into February, that's classically when we start to see kind of our, our most amount of water for sections of California. Uh, so it's going to be potentially wetter than average, but the Santa Ana's, the direction of the wind may limit the moisture really on one side of the Sierras or the other. It's not going to blanket everybody. Parts, isolated parts of the, the Rockies will have some moisture. And then another swatch here from uh, just outside of Dallas and Oklahoma City, kind of wrapping up, trying to get into the Ohio Valley. Drier than average, some of the southern plains and sections of Florida. That's your week's Weather Watch. I'm Matt Makins. We'll see you the next time. 
Weather Watch is brought to you by Ag Risk Advisors, with you no matter the weather, and by WSR Insurance, providing insurance solutions for more than a century. Visit their websites for more details. While bovine respiratory disease costs the cattle industry hundreds of millions of dollars each year, which is why producers are always looking for ways to stay ahead of the disease. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brad Bullish shows us an innovative technology from Merck Animal Health that can make a real difference against BRD. Peter Armstrong has plenty to do to keep him busy. In addition to owning a veterinary clinic in Jacksboro, Texas, he also runs his own cattle business. So we're predominantly backgrounding operation, and so we buy cattle out of three local cell barns. We always background them for 60 days, um, and then depending on time of year, they'll either go to a feedlot or we'll turn them out on either grass or wheat grazing for 60 to 90 days, depending on the cattle. Dr. Armstrong has seen firsthand how the hard work of a cattle producer can be quickly undone by an outbreak of bovine respiratory disease. This is especially true for a backgrounder, where the co-mingling of cattle from different sale barns can often increase the risk for BRD. One of the bigger problems that we see with bovine respiratory disease or BRD is varying levels of vaccination. You really don't know what these cattle have had, whether they've had a modified live, a killed product, whether that killed product was boosted, or whether they've had nothing at all. BRD remains a deadly problem for the industry, but Merck Animal Health has introduced an illuminating electronic ear tag that can help producers spot sick animals quicker. It's called Sense Hub Feedlot, and the thumb-sized tag mounts on the inside of an animal's ear flap and monitors both body temperature and movement. Sense Hub Feedlot is this specialized tag that shoots an infrared light into the ear canal that detects temperature. It also detects movement at the individual level, but it also compares it to the group. And after a short period of time, 48 hours for, to get a baseline, it's monitoring that animal in relation to itself and the group 24-7. So it's like having someone watch these animals 24-7. It sends the signal to uh, an algorithm, then through Machine learning, this algorithm will start to recognize which animals are showing signs that there's something wrong with their, their health status and they need to be addressed. By detecting sick cattle earlier, they can be assessed and treated sooner to help improve treatment outcomes. This technology is allowing us to pick up on animals that we otherwise wouldn't recognize until it's too late. And so that really is starting to give us an edge on getting the, uh, a good treatment in at the earliest time point of that disease process to give those cattle the best chance they have to, to fight it. I really got a good feel that this could be a really good way for me to mitigate some time, some expenses, and try to identify cattle that are sick sooner. And that was really the big thing for me. If I could identify those cattle that were sick you know, up to 48 hours quicker, then I could move, on, move those cattle forward um, and we didn't have to catch up from all the way they lost from being sick. Dr. Armstrong gets an email every morning that lists the cattle that need to be assessed. The SenseHub feedlot ear tag also has a flashing LED light, which helps identify animals that need to be sorted off for treatment. There's a green light that blinks in their ear that indicates that those cattle are sick. Those calves that will indicate, especially early on in a group of calves, are not cattle that I would ever pull that look sick. Um, they are typically the first up to the feed bunk. It's kind of weird, the first calf running up, has got a blinking light and you pull them and they have 106 temperature. So they still feel really good to eat, but they're just starting the earliest part of that viremia and, and, and are getting sick. And so we're able to identify those cattle, let them finish eating, because that's a very common thing, right? See a calf, pull it out of the pen. Well, now he's missed breakfast that morning. And so if we're able to pull that calf out after that fact, then a lot of times that's got a big benefit for us. Even with feedlot in the name, Sense Hub can have a positive impact on a cow-calf operation that retains calves, or, as Dr. Armstrong has proven, a backgrounding or stocker operation. Dr. Armstrong is also excited to share his story with other cattle producers he works with at the clinic. If I'm able to go and tell a client, hey, this is what I've done in this operation, and this is how it's done for me, um, then I think I can give that advice a lot stronger. Um, and I definitely see opportunities, you know, we have a lot of people in this 
part of the country that wean their cow calf herds. Um, and so we end up, and I, I think there's some opportunities for these fall calvers, and that's always the time of year that we deal with BRD uh, to a greater extent. If we could go in and then say, hey, we can identify these calves, pull these calves quicker um, so that we can get them back and get you guys your weaning weights that you need. I think that would be um, the biggest the biggest recommendation that we'll probably be looking at. The powerful antibiotic lineup from Merck Animal Health is packed with products that effectively treat bovine respiratory disease. Merck also offers non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug options, both incorporated with an antibiotic and as standalone products. NSAIDs are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory and we'll often use those in treatment of bovine respiratory disease to help bring down the fever that we see associated with those diseases that cause that, whether that's a viral process or a bacterial process. If we can get early on in the process, we can institute ancillary treatments like the use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatories to help minimize that inflammation, make the animals feel better, and also reduce the amount of lung damage that's occurring. It can help them get over this disease process and get back to food and water and a normal life earlier and easier than if we were trying to play catch up. Bovine respiratory disease will always be a top concern for the beef industry, which is why Merck Animal Health continues to develop new approaches to help cattle producers stay ahead of BRD and other challenges. Merck Animal Health is one of the companies that's constantly looking forward, always looking for new ways to help cattle producers help the cattle industry move forward and, and do better. You know, the use of antibiotics, it's an important thing and it's something that we don't want to lose on the animal side or the human side. So antibiotic stewardship is very important. And that's why companies like Merck Animal Health are looking for ways that we can use our antibiotics to a better way, more appropriately, uh, less often, and to reduce the amount that's being used and have it more targeted so we, we still come out with a better outcome with those animals and so the more we can figure out ways to help the producer recognize these animals and help the animals by getting the right treatment in early it reduces the amount that we have to use it, it improves our antibiotic stewardship and it's better for everybody involved reporting from texas i'm brad bulla for ncba's cattlemen to cattlemen if you want to learn more about inner ear canal temperature and activity tracking and the difference it can make on your cattle operation, just visit their website, sensehubfeedlot.com. Still ahead here on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we've got a look at a feed processor that's providing some huge savings for some producers. That story, right after this. At Merck Animal Health, we wake up each day seeking new innovations to keep your herd healthy. This is why we're proud to now include AllFlex Livestock Intelligence in our portfolio of solutions. With AllFlex, we can provide the tools to identify, monitor, and trace each animal within a herd. Its state-of-the-art offerings deliver real-time insights to help you optimize productivity. Merck Animal Health and AllFlex Livestock Intelligence. For our animals, our industry, and our future. Get jazzed as the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show returns to New Orleans February 1st through 3rd, 2023. Experience the oldest and largest convention for the beef cattle business and a trade show like you've never seen before. Get up close and personal with the latest techniques and equipment on display. Invest in yourself and the beef cattle industry's future. Learn, network, and relax in the Big Easy February 1st through 3rd, 2023. Register today by visiting convention.ncba.org. One of the big challenges during winter is making sure that your cattle maintain their health and body condition. Here's a look at a great product that can make winter feeding a lot easier and more cost effective. Years ago, Southeast Colorado rancher R.C. Patterson was faced with the nearly impossible task of purchasing and making payments on both his land and cattle. To generate the income he needed would require running nearly double the amount of cattle that he was comfortable putting on his land. But when he was a kid, R.C. had actually seen his dad use all of his winter pasture in the summer by running twice as many cows. That was great from a cash flow standpoint, but providing the cows with a total cost-efficient ration in the winter 
required a lot of machinery and a lot of work. We're feeding numerous different class of livestock and everything that we feed has different nutritional requirements. We were just nonstop grinding and mixing and you know, it took you know, two or three operations to get the cattle fed every day. And so the question become what made it feasible? And of course, what would make it feasible is if we could do the whole operation, do one man, one machine, one operation, get it all done at once. RC started looking for a machine to make feeding easier. And when he couldn't find one to suit his needs, he designed and patented his own. The result is the Easy Ration Processor, which allows the operator to blend two different feed sources and change up the ratio on the go. People were already trying to do that. People were already putting two different types of hay on there, but they were just stuck with one blend. It kind of occurred to me one day is like, why don't we just run them at different rates and then we can create any blend we want. And it seemed so ridiculously simple that I thought, well, it must not work or surely somebody would have done this years ago. <laughs> but after months of mulling it over, I finally said, there's no reason this can't work. It's too straightforward and simple. So what we actually developed was basically a little miniature feed mill that went on the back of a truck. And so we were able to load up two different types of roughage. You know, it focused on blending roughage just because that was the cheapest thing available to us. And so we're blending, say, alfalfa on one side and corn stalks on the other, for example. And then we actually had a, a grain attachment where we could blend in some concentrate. And so what we were doing that had never really been done before was the fact that we were actually blending them, creating a ration and dispensing it at the same time that we were feeding the cattle. All with one machine, one loading, boom, we load up and go. And readjust some controls, feed totally different blends, even take ingredients out of the mix. So the Easy Ration Processor is the only thing anywhere that can actually do that. Load it up and just create infinite blends that fit whatever class of livestock you're feeding. Inside the cab, a touchscreen computer monitors and controls all the functions of the unit, including the feed processing, mixing ratios, and floor chain speeds. We've got alfalfa hay on the left floor. So this control and this scale monitor correlates with the alfalfa. On the right floor, we've got corn stalks that are basically a filler and a lot cheaper. So this turns on the right floor and then this controls the speed of how much corn stalks we're gonna put in the mix. And then we can monitor that, of course, with our right floor monitor here. Right now in this pen that we're gonna feed, we've got um, uh, 87 heifers and seven bulls in there. We've just turned the bulls in on them. We've given them the lute lace shots. We've synchronized everything. And so we're gonna to wanna to feed 310 pounds of alfalfa. We're gonna to wanna to feed 330 pounds of corn stalks and 400 pounds of the whole corn. Now this is a pretty hot ration, but this is a growing ration for, for our heifers. And if you look down here, the ration we would feed the cows is radically different. And that's the cool thing about the machine is we readjust the controls and feed infinite different rations. We can even take a, a feed source out of there. For example, we feed the horses we got here. We're just feeding them straight alfalfa. We would not turn on the right floor or the grain auger, we would just process up the alfalfa. RC realized with the easy ration processor, he could not only cut his feeding time, but also create nutritionally balanced rations and change them on the go for each class of livestock. And since he doesn't have to save grass for winter grazing, RC could put double the cows on his land during the growing season. This not only utilizes his forage at its highest nutritional value, with proper rotational grazing practices, he can actually improve his grass. What we created then with this ranch with the Easy Ration Hay Processor is the ability to feed a total blended ration so we don't have to rely on any grass. We can use it all in the summer. We're able to run double the cattle because we have all that grass available for summer use that we normally would use in the winter. So whenever you're able to run double the cattle for the same per head, I mean, that's economics 101. Get your costs in line and then increase production. The Easy Ration Processor has come a long way from that original prototype, and now there are several different models available to customers. So our Easy Ration Hay Processors are built right here in the good old U.S. of A. in Harrington, Kansas. We got four and six bell models that can go on trucks. You can get grain attachments. You could without grain. There's scale options. Same with the tractor pull. We got four and six bell models um, that uh, you can get scales on them. The the grain attachment, no grain attachment. Well, and then we just come out with the pickup pull model that we're really proud of. With our pickup pull model, no one that we know has ever done anything like that. Created something that's self-contained. You just gotta tie onto the gooseneck ball and go. 
The Easy Ration Processor has cut feed costs by over 50% for some of RC's customers and has also allowed them to survive droughts and high feed prices without having to sell cows. I encourage people, if good enough isn't good enough anymore, take a look and maybe we've got some answers for you that you've been looking for for a long time. Reporting from southeastern Colorado, I'm Russell Nimitz for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Now, if you want to learn more about the Easy Ration Processor, just call them toll free at 1-800-242-9599 or visit their website, easyration.com. Still ahead on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll show you how the Natural Resources Conservation Service can help cattle producers improve their land and resources. That story when we return. So stay with us. Are you ready for a better shot at profitability with a more consistent, more efficient cow herd? Then don't miss out on the maternal edge offered by GelbV and Balancer Genetics. Stayability and longevity is really a strength of the GelbV breed. And you know, when these cows can remain in the herd 10 years or thereabouts, uh, they return a lot of dollars to the producers. Research shows GelbV cows will stay in your herd longer with greater fertility and more pounds of calf wean. It's the ability of that cow not only to have that calf unassisted, but to own that calf, to stay right there with that calf, to do whatever's necessary to get that calf going no matter what. No breed we work with does a better job of owning that calf and making sure that she's gonna take care of them, the GelbV breed. For cow-calf producers, the maternal traits offered by GelbV and Balancer Genetics are the smart, reliable, and profitable choice. Find out more at the website gelbv.org. Get jazzed as the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show returns to New Orleans February 1st through 3rd, 2023. Experience the oldest and largest convention for the beef cattle business. Register today by visiting convention.ncba.org. Well, the USDA's Natural Resources and Conservation Service can play a very important role in helping farmers and ranchers manage their land and water resources. Brian Baxter takes us to New Mexico to see how NRCS has helped the Mescalero Apache cattle growers implement conservation practices that provide some real benefits on their vast landscape. On a late summer morning, the cowboy crew is gathering cows and calves on the pinyon juniper grassland that's a part of the Mescalero Apache Cattle Growers, an enterprise of the Mescalero Apache Tribe. This is the Mescalero Apache Indian Reservation, located here within uh, South Central New Mexico. The reservation is approximately 460,000 acres. We run a cow-calf operation for the tribe. It's a uh, Right now we run about 2,150 mother cows. It's been dry, but we're still continuing to grow it and create a little bigger operation. The uh, cattle here are an Angus cross with a uh, Hereford. Historically, the uh, livestock were predominantly a Hereford breed and have transitioned to a uh, Angus cross Hereford. Doing that, we've tried to increase the hybrid vigor and uh, uh, try to have higher weaning weights for the cattle operation. It's a predominantly grandma grass country. We run from high country in the summer and then we shuffle all these cows down to the winter country as we come through in the fall. The cattle operation is an important source of income and employment for the tribe. In addition, there's an effort to educate school groups from the reservation about the cattle and the land. Any grass? What happens to the grass when it snows? It's frost. frost over. Can they find it? No. Nope. What do we need to do? Okay. For the tribe to have that support for the youth, it teaches them a responsibility and it teaches them to improve their work ethics and having that support from the tribe is important because as we invest in our youth, that's the future of the tribe. We work with the school, especially Mescalero, and they 
in order to keep the, the interest in the ranch and keep these kids learning about some of their culture and, and the opportunities available still here on the reservation. A core value of the tribe is care of the land, which has been helped by partnerships with the USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service, the NRCS. So Thomas Mendez, he was on the Soil and Water Conservation District Board. I believe he kind of saw a vision of what the tribe could possibly do just by stopping in the office, talking to the planners there, learning a little bit more and more every time he came in and just working with us every year that they got a contract. And I think the greatest thing about them is they're willing to try things. When we did that outreach to our local NRCS field office, we've uh, established a professional working relationship. They showed us how to use the ecological site descriptions and also the prescribed grazing data sheets. And so with that technical advice and expertise, we were able to effectively implement a range management plan and do a range inventory on the reservation. I do believe Thomas and a lot of the other tribal members do have a passion to conserve their land. And it's really amazing because Thomas will come in and he's already thinking of what's the next project we can work on. What's the next thing? What, what funding sources are out there? What can we do to work together and how can we make it better? Making things better has included a variety of projects, from installing wildlife-friendly fencing to refurbishing old water tanks and expanding the availability of solar-powered water on the landscape. The tribe's uh, main resource concern was livestock water uh, distribution, quantity and quality. So doing that, we've installed livestock pipelines, uh, watering facilities, which are troughs and storages. And that's helped them distribute cattle evenly, as well as work on bringing in more wildlife. It's helped us to more effectively distribute the wildlife and the livestock grazing and browsing. It's improved the availability of drinking water for the wildlife, and it's helped us to have a higher quality beef product with utilizing uh, rangelands in areas where there wasn't water, but then also, like I said, dis distributing the livestock grazing to have a, uh, you know, a bigger, healthier uh, livestock herd. Another challenge the tribes worked on with NRCS is the removal of invasive juniper trees. Brush control is super important, I feel like, in here just because it's been super invasive um, in these native grasslands and it's really encroached and shaded out native grasses and which it's over competes. With brush control, we've seen night and day differences with native grasses coming back um, with no seeding whatsoever. Once the juniper are removed, we see a response with the grass. They're now able to establish and those that seed banks there and they can flourish. They don't have that shade and that thick understory of the map of the juniper needles and so now they get light and they can start growing. When I came here there, there was more grass here than I'd ever seen in my life. <laughs> so, but a lot of it's due to the, the brush work, getting these bottoms opened back up so that the grass has a chance to get a good start. So it's opened up a lot of country that we haven't been able to utilize before and that's, that's made the big difference. The technical assistance and funding opportunities available through NRCS programs are open to all producers. And for the Mescalero Apache tribe, the relationship with the NRCS team has made a difference on the land. I have watched the landscape transform um, working with Thomas and the tribe. I've seen areas that have been totally encroached with invasive juniper become beautiful historic rangeland. NRCS is super beneficial to producers all across the country um, in such diverse places all the way around, from pasture to rangeland to farmland. We offer these programs for the people and people are willing to do the conservation and put that conservation on the ground and it's great to see. I just appreciate the NRCS staff for their professionalism, all of their assistance they provide to the tribe and just their overall availability that they have to ag producers uh, in the area and their knowledge on the landscape is valuable. From the Mescalero Apache Reservation in New Mexico, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. If you have conservation practices you'd like to put in place on your operation, you should start by visiting with your local NRCS office 
about the technical and financial assistance they provide. Visit their website, nrcs.usda.gov, to find an office near you. Still to come here on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll share some cattle handling tips from a great stockmanship and stewardship event in Virginia. Don't go away. We'll have more right after this. Cattle producers across the country work hard to care for their animals and their land. The USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service is there to help. Find out how you can work with NRCS to develop a conservation plan for your operation. Find possible funding resources for implementing conservation practices or get free expert advice on ways to improve your farm or ranch. Visit the website nrcs.usda.gov today. It can be tough to keep up with all the issues that impact the beef cattle business. That's why NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen is dedicated to bringing you valuable news, information, and education. The goal is to give you the knowledge you need to make the best decisions for your operation. So if you're looking for in-depth coverage of the beef industry and the issues that matter to you, don't miss Cattlemen to Cattlemen debuting every week on RFD TV and on YouTube. Well, for years, NCBA has offered stockmanship and stewardship events across the country that provide hands-on training to improve cattle care. Here's some valuable tips on working cattle that were offered at one of those events in Virginia. Are fight or flight animals. There's two basic factors that factor into how they're going to respond to environmental stimuli. So we have genetics. Then there's also learned behavior. So cattle can learn by experience, they can learn by watching other cattle. So we want to take that learned behavior and make it a good experience because we can teach cattle to fear us or we can teach cattle to work with us. So we'll start with the flight zone. The flight zone is the area around the cattle where once you step into, it creates movement. Then there's also the point of balance. The point of balance is around the shoulder region, but really depends on the eye. Cattle really have to see you for this all to work. Once you walk past, and cattle always want to move to the area of least pressure, and they are pressure release learners, so if I have the eye of my cattle right here and I'm going to walk past that eye towards its tail, it wants to go back past me. So that's one point of balance. Now most of us, where do we like to go when we empty a pen? To the back of the pen, right? But then you get a bottleneck and nobody wants to move and you can't, all you do is hit the back of the herd and the front of the herd's not going anywhere. So what we try to do is the handler will work from the front of the pen to empty that pen. We'll walk past the flight zone of one, get it moving. Walk past the flight zone of another, get it moving. Slowly keeping that nice calm demeanor, your cows aren't stressed, you'll get the herd instinct and you'll empty that pen quicker than you, you ever have. Parallel movement is used sometimes to slow the herd or stop the herd. You're moving parallel to their point of balance, so they stop and look at you. So you can give them either go that way, or maybe I'm going to stop you and I'm going to do something different and change direction. And I will point out right now that whether you call it low stress cattle handling, good stockmanship, every clinician, every person is going to approach it differently. And it doesn't mean they're right or wrong. But I do encourage you to listen to everyone. Go out and see anything you can. Take the little tidbit that works for you and, and try to apply it to get a positive result.
There's a great opportunity for producer education and information from February 1st through the 3rd in New Orleans. The Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show has lots of educational events, including Cattlemen's College, that can help set your operation up for success. You can get all the details, including how to register at the website convention.ncba.org. We're wrapping up this week's show with legacy photos now. These are shots submitted by our viewers of daily life on the farm or ranch. So let's take a look. We'd like to feature your photos here on Cattleman to Cattleman, and you can submit them a couple of different ways. Message them to us on the Cattleman to Cattleman Facebook page or email them to c2c at beef.org. Send them our way, and we just may use them on a future episode. That's going to do it for this week's edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Thank you so much for spending time with us. And we'll see you again next week, right here on RFD TV.